Okay, let's do that. So, um, share my screen. Who's that chat box? No, your computer crashed. That sucks. What did you miss? Everything. No. Okay. Well, at least you've at least got the recording. That's the main thing. Okay. Let me jump in here and share this. So, so not many people have heard about ChatGPT. I've noticed it's like it's kind of snuck under the radar a bit. You know, um, I'm obviously being facetious. It's it's been one of those things. Interestingly, it's um, I was I was sat down with Clayton Daniels. I'm going to Clayton from XY slash Ensemble, and we were chatting a bit about this. And he said he was he was making the point that um. When he started down the route with AI a while back, it was pretty bad. Everyone was like, AI is the next biggest thing. And then it was like, no, it's not. And then when it came out every at this time, everybody was kind of um, a bit kind of, here we go again. And then it just went nuts. And for those who kind of are not familiar with it, I mean, we could we could talk about, I mean, I've got a whole description of it that, that I asked Chi, chat GPT to write for me. But bottom line, it's an algorithm. It's basically autocorrect on steroids. Uh, and it's gone viral because it has the ability, like never before, to interact uh, and answer queries like a human would. It's obviously not a human. But I think the reason why it's so powerful or why it's become so effective across the board is because it has this ability to grow massive efficiency gains, like really, really quickly. I mean, people are suddenly looking at tasks that they used to do, you know, they require attention to detail and they're just doing them instantly or fast tracking research or generating raw content or mass personalization in a, in a way that's that's never been done before. I mean, Simon, you're predominantly using for edit, uh, copy edit, uh, for marketing. Is that correct? Well, me personally, but the rest of the team are really using it for emails and um, responses and stuff. So okay. Tice actually uses, uh, Grammarly has their its own version now as it well does, called yeah. Grammarly Go. And that, in that plugs straight into his email system. So when he writes an email, he flex okay. it all and fix. And the guys are using that a fair bit too. Okay. Alex, have you been using it for anything? Other than my parenting. Other than, yeah, you did mention that and that worked quite well. Um, uh, yeah, I, have, um, I have used it for a few blog, uh, Instagram posts, but I don't know. I'm, I, I, I don't know. I'm not that into it. <laughs> Do you know what? There's two types of people. There's three types of people. The, there's a somebody who there's people who've really got and they're using it on a regular basis. And those who have dipped in, and I was I was like that at the beginning. You dip in, you have a play with it. This is neat, but you can't really find a use for it. And then there's a period of time which will go through, and you'll come back to it. And, and I think what we're going to run through today will probably give you that that oh, this is what you use it for. Yeah, I'm in this stage where it's like you know I've seen people designing gardens, and there's like fake human, like you know making whatever people and i'm just like oh i don't want to go down this <laughs> sort of world but i know i'm gonna to have to actually accept that this is what's happening gotcha so, yeah like I, I need to use it you elizabeth have... have you dipped your toes in the chat gpt ocean um no i haven't but i'd like to and i just need to know which buttons to press to get started um so... because i can just see that a lot of what I'm concerned about is that emails that we send out to people have got the right tone yep. and rather than, you know, can you just do these dot points and sign here? Okay, is, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Have, have everybody here met each other just quickly? Okay, Simon, meet Elizabeth. Elizabeth, meet Alex. Alex, Simon, do you want to give us the 15-second Simon B? I am not a financial advisor. I am an operations manager. Um, so I deal with the guys... General um, marketing manager. general yeah uh, i think you, you you had a good word for it a little while ago Stu. But um the engine room i think is what you called it so i do everything the guys don't really want to do they can focus on their work and i'll, I'll handle most of the other he stuff does marketing the operations the managing uh outside of staff processes yeah the lot it it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah elizabeth um simon i've got a job for you <laughs> big time <laughs> I used to um, be a graphic designer as well. Ah, oh, even better. Um, I um, <laughs> This is what Elizabeth uh, does, by the way. She she surrounds herself with people and gets them to do things, and it, she's great at it. But anyway, keep going. Okay. Um, Simon, I like what you were talking about in terms of SEO um, with Stu yeah. a few weeks ago, which sounds yeah. good. And um, I've sort of dabbled in that a bit. Um, yeah, so we're a small advice practice uh, specialising in ethical and sustainable investing, and um, I'm a tech dinosaur, but moving along slowly, thanks to Stu. 
and trying to get things more efficient. Yeah. yeah. We're all tech dinosaurs. It's moving so far. Yeah. We're all left behind in the trade. It's, it's yeah, so it hard is. to keep up. Yes, it is hard I'm, to keep up. But I'm a much bigger tech dinosaur than you. I, I think, uh, as always, I think you're being very, very modest. I think you, like, you just love it. You dive into it. Next thing you know, yeah. Alex, uh, uh, what am I? I am, I am a financial advisor. <laughs> <laughs> am I? <laughs> I've never thinking... understood people who use the inverted commas. Are they being ironic, or are they suggesting <laughs> that I'm not? Like, I am a good person. Is that what? You're... <laughs> I come to work and my kids think I don't do anything. I don't actually have to be here. I just come because I'm bored during the day. Uh, <laughs> and with my dad, basically. Uh, no, that we. Uh, my dad, Andrew, has been advising for, I don't know, 30 years, my whole life almost. And, yeah, I felt absolutely obliged to follow in his footsteps and here I am. Well, I think you guys win the competition for the most uh, modest group of people as I've ever appeared on a webinar together. It's like, I think I'm a fan. I kind of do. And, you know, yeah, brilliant. I love it. With that in mind, let's, let's, let me jump in. Let's jump straight into because this is about the practical side of things. So clearest uh, example I can use is what we use it for. Uh, this chat bot that we just added to the site has been programmed with every single transcript of every single module out there that we've created. So very, very quickly, you can ask it a question. So for example, uh, what's, uh, what, are, what are some ways I can digitally market as an advisor? And what it will go is it'll go out there and trawl every single piece of content that we fed it, and it will tell you at a higher level sort of stuff that's in the content. What is a good technology tool tech tool for managing practice email and again it'll go through missive it'll give you the it'll give you the answers you need to know to stuff that's deep within the transcript without you having to look at the transcript so from my perspective this is kind of one of the things that it's very very good at uh, if you want to use it uh, for anything it's very very good at being told that you need certain things and then crunching through large amounts of data or or do things in a really quick way in order to deliver you what you need so you can move on very, very quickly. Does that make sense? So this is one practical way uh, you can do it. So there's nothing to stop you grabbing every piece of content that you've got about ethical investing, Elizabeth, or getting it to trawl your website. There's another one on our website down here, which is, um, again, we just told it, hey, we want you to sit on the website. We actually, we actually tell it, we want you to pretend to be this thing and go, what's the, what programs do you offer? And bingo, it'll go away, draw from everything on the website and blah, 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 blah. there we go. And it'll tell you what you need to know. Does that make sense? So again, that's one of the ways that we use it. I'll give you some other ways that you can do it. Copy editing is another way. And I'll, actually, I'll, I'll run through some, some ways to access it because I think you mentioned that. The obvious way to access it is via the, the um, chat GPT interface. And if you just type in chat GPT, it'll give you the link. You sign up for a free account uh, and you can jump in. Uh, if you want to pay 20 bucks a month, you get access to the GPT plus, which has a whole bunch of uh, benefits that it, that, it, that yeah, it doesn't as a normal, uh, that you don't get normally. It also retains a record of everything you've done before. So you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff there, including uh ai tools networking uh what was this one? Oh, that was we were kind of, here we were trying to brainstorm idea names yeah that's right i won't go for that um i put a wings of fire quiz together for hermione because she's crazy about wings of fire uh i asked it to write chapters that i could write to i was to crunch through chapters i asked it to design a a um a step-by-step -step guide as to how i could uh direct an admin assistant to add information from fact find to, to, to X plan. So you can kind of see, it gives you the ability to go in there and ask it to do certain things and um, respond. It also, and this is something I should mention up front, uh, it, it has the potential for lying. It's called hallucinating. They haven't worked out why, uh, how it does it. So one of the things you've got to be really, really careful is don't believe a word it says. I'm going to try and give you an example of when it made a mistake. 
Uh, let's go in here. Okay, so here's an example. What I was doing is I was grabbing transcripts and I was saying, I want you to, I'm going to feed you the transcripts to the live webinar. I want you to generate a chapter of an ebook. Absolutely. Do you understand the request? Okay, here's chapter one, right? There we go. Give the raw, raw transcript. It's written the, the, the introduction. Here's chapter two. Now notice what happens next. What does that say? Chapter three. I asked it to generate chapter two and it's gone and generated chapter three. I then jumped in and said, wasn't well, that supposed to be chapter two? And it goes, apologies for the confusion. You're correct. Here's chapter two. And the point is, these are called hallucinations. And uh, some of the hallucinations will look, it was called hallucinations, but it's generating information that is not true. Uh, someone asked it to come out and um, it generated information about Pele receiving an honorary degree as a doctor of sport from Sao Paulo University. Never happened. Pele got a degree from Edinburgh University, but has never received an honorary degree. So you have to be really very careful that when you're putting things into chat GPT, particularly if it's research-based, you've got to watch what's coming back. So this is one way of accessing. You could just jump in there, sign up for a free account, or pay the 20 bucks a month, and, and you, you get your own little chatbot. There's another way that we've been using it recently, and that is we bought a little uh, plugin called Voila. And Voila kind of sits up here. And it enables me to go through, I can set up certain uh, actions. It has AI assistance. So I can go, uh, I'd like to chat about SEO. Cool. Uh, how can I SEO optimize a blog? And again, it will go through much like ChatGPT will, but instead of me having to log into the system, there it is. One of the other benefits of doing this, and I'm going to give you an example. Uh, I'm going to go into coaching. All right. Uh, when you've got something like this, and we're going to create, let's go into, let's go into books. No books. Yeah, let's go into books, blogs and idioms. Right. Okay. So I'll go into work in progress which is me just coming up with ideas. Uh, let's go through and grab one that looks like it's been transcribed. transcribed. Okay. So let's do this one. Uh, let's go here. Okay. I can go through here. I can copy it and I can go, I want you to fix the grammar and spelling on this. And very quickly, you can go through and do copy editing, which I think is one of the, the, the best ways of using this tool to go through and create. Alex, what's that, what's that for? Well, just all the <laughs> no, hours we spend reading the same shit. Exactly. You're reading 100%. <laughs> like, I, I'm going to grab, I'm going to go into Google. I'm gonna go into, yeah, I'm going to go into Google Drive because recently... One of the things we did is we downloaded all of the transcripts of our um, training. Now, I'm, I'll talk about what my view on this is. This this is a tool that I said this in the blog. Work out what you want to do and work out how you're going to approach it. Use it to crunch through the grunt work and then clean it up at the end. I wouldn't put anything online that I didn't crunch through. But here I've, I've grabbed the transcript. And if you look at the transcript, this is what it looks like when it's not been edited, right? It's a mess. You wouldn't read it to your worst enemy, Okay. But what I can, what I've done is, you can see, I'm going through and I'm asking it to copy edit it and get it into a state that I can work with. Uh, so, for example, let me grab a bit here. So I'd go through and go. Uh, yeah, da -da. Okay, this is a story about Dave Goggins. If you don't, I don't know this gentleman. I don't know if you know this gentleman, Dave Goggins. Blah blah blah. We'll go through. There's a whole piece in here. I'm going to clean up the text so it's actually about something. Yours might be grabbing uh, a transcript. It might be dictating a high level what you want to do. You clean it up. Uh, where is it? Get this right. Okay. So let's just go with this. I can just jump in and go, first thing I need you to do is I want you to copy edit it. There it goes. All it's doing is removing all the rubbish. Cool. And then I'm going to copy it. Paste it over the top. 
I'm then going to go, you know what? Let's go and improve the writing. I don't know who Marissa is. <laughs> okay, let's copy that across. Bingo. Now I'm going to, uh, you know what? I'm going to pump in here. I'm going to jump in and go, uh, provide me with a three paragraph overview of Dave Goggins. Beautiful. So I copy that across. I can then even turn around and go, you know, let's make it shorter. Let's make it longer. You're getting where I'm going with this? So I can create a thing very quickly. What else can I do? Uh, let's get rid of that. I can go through and uh, make it shorter, make it longer, simplify the language, summarize it, change the tone. Let's make it more confident. Actually, let's take that out of there. Let's highlight that and make that sound. Actually, let's make this sound like Kermit the Frog. Rewrite this. Rewrite this. So it sounds like, actually, let's go Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins? Tony Robbins. Tim Robbins would be a different thing. Actually, let's, let's just do, rewrite this in a uh, more professional tone. Okay, so you can very quickly turn the t uh, uh, change the tone of it very quickly. Does that make sense? I'm going to go, uh, do me better, rewrite this. Rewrite this. Actually, you know what? I just do audio. Can I use audio? Right? Yeah. Rewrite this as a email to a client written in a personal one-to-one -one tone. Bingo. So you can, it'll just go through, it's putting the structure around it. You, you, you're going, getting where I'm going with it. Really good for copy editing, really good for changing things from certain things to certain other things, uh, and just generally taking a piece of content, flipping it around, doing the donkey work, and doing getting the 80% of work that you do to go through and you know, gab the research that supports you, obviously, to check the research, and just get you to the point where you can focus down on writing the stuff, or the, the really important stuff of checking the research and writing it in a style that suits you. You with me? Uh, it's really good at doing high-level research. So, for example, let's go through. What's a topic? Uh, identify. Oh, here we go. Let's go. Identify. Identify for me uh, 10 great articles written on how advisors are using chat GPT in their practices. So no, GPT giving... doesn't go past September 21. You're right, it doesn't, unless so I give it. It won't know about chat GPT because it hasn't actually looked at itself. <laughs> Very good point. So let's go, yeah. Uh, identify, uh, recommend for articles uh, about the best financial planning software in Australia in 2021. <laughs> Let's try 2020. Okay, that didn't work. Um, I'll give you an example where it did work. 
where is the research papers i i was able to turn around and go okay i need to i need to, links to 10 research papers that have been written by financial services organizations that talk about the best way to generate active referrals for advice businesses and it went through and identified a whole bunch of tools i went and then looked into them a lot of them didn't exist anymore but it was a, i was able to do this research really really quickly that makes sense um i'll give you another example where we used it for another research piece uh that's a transition thing uh for caring for juniper bonsai uh score headers no in fifa 22 that was a different thing japanese four course meal uh i can't find it that wrote a song for me yeah i can't find it the particular thing but i was able to digital mark is that it no nope. uh no i'm not gonna watch through it but it enabled me to go i need you to find some research actually let me do this uh what are some important books to read on the topic of process design for for small business let's go with that one provide uh, uh, details of the author when it was published and uh, a two sentence summary of the content recommend at least 10. So if you've got a high level idea of what you're looking for, it can do a pretty good job of finding it for you, if that makes sense. Uh, I'll give you another one. I'll go in here. Give me a quick, it's very good for summarizing things. Summary of the latest this QAR announcements. Quality of advice. May not work, but we'll see how we go. Announcements in Australia. Let's do a different one. Uh, yeah. Give me a summary of RG146. So you're absolutely right, Simon. It isn't connect. You can connect it. It has the ability to connect it. But it, if you if you're looking for something far back like papers, it can go through them very quickly, give you a summary on certain things, and give you high level research. Does that make sense? It's really good. Do you want me to keep going? Is this useful? Yeah. It's also really good. For example, Simon, this would be good for you. Oh, maybe not. But if you've got, you know, sometimes you create, you'll dictate how to guides. And then you'll drop in in your in your um, workspace and you'll never fix them again. You can jump in and you can very quickly grab those ones that haven't been quite finished. Uh, you can highlight it. There we go. Let's just improve the writing on that. Fix for grammar and spelling. Uh, simplify. Copy. Pop it in there. And just clean up your how-to guides really, 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 really uh, quickly on certain things. Uh, it's good for summarizing meetings. Um, if you have a, particularly if you've got a file note, you could drop your file note template into a chat GPT uh, and get it to just clean it up really, really quickly and then provide a summary. So for example, one of the things it can do, I'll just jump in. We do summaries of all our meetings using Laxis, which is a, like an, uh, an Otter style tool. I'll just jump in here. There's the transcripts. I can just say quickly, and again, this is tight. It's linking through to chat GPT. I could achieve the same thing by grabbing the 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 transcript and just pop it into ChatGPT, which I'll do now. Uh, export transcripts. Actually, no, I'll do this. Uh, export transcripts to open it. Just a second. Won't let me open. That's great. So we're doing a lot of work on audio file noting at the moment. Uh, Alex, 
this is one where if you if you don't like some people don't like to have a sit down and work on the transcripts. I'm just copying it across now. I would jump into, you know, I'll do go straight into chat GPT, pop it in there and just go, please uh, copy edit. This transcript. Bango. I've got something that actually I can work with that is, is done in a fraction of the time it would otherwise take me to get for someone else to do it. Make sense, Simon? I'll run through a couple of other things. Uh, writing emails we've spoken about. It's very good for SEO optimization. I'll see if I can optimize. Uh, let's go through. You can sit down and literally, actually, we'll just go through. I'll grab a blog. I'll just use this because it's handy. Uh, you could jump into a blog. Actually, here we go, blogs. And I've already done this one, but I'll jump in and go, okay, let's blog this one, highlight it and go, uh, let's go through and whoops, stop. Uh, that was just, okay, there we go, okay. SEO optimize this for um, pricing for financial advisors. And again, if you're doing SEO optimization, you'd normally have a few different keywords, five or six, but you give it the keywords and it's going to go through and it's going to integrate those keywords into the into the actual text. You can kind of see it's dropping it in there. Similarly, create the, the meta tags, the meta information. Uh, suggest three SEO optimized titles to test. Again, crunches through some of the SEO stuff as long as you've got your SEO work done really, really quickly. Another one I really like uh, from ChatGPT uh, is explain really clearly to me how ethical investing is different. Now that's pretty long, uh, but it gives you, there's a lovely little um, uh, command you can call TLDR, and it literally translates as too long, don't read. And you plug it, plug it in, and it seeks to basically take a long form piece of text and communicate it the, to you losing none of the context or meaning in as short uh, a phrase as possible. So for example, let's say you, you've written a long term piece, which is explaining uh, how um, margin lending works. And you're just like, this is this doesn't make sense. You can drop it into ChatGPT and say, I want you to rewrite this in a really simple way. TLDR. Really great. We're doing it. Um, another one. I know not a lot of people are coders, but one thing you can do with ChatGPT is you can create Excel formulas. Write me a formula for uh, Google Sheets that that will calculate the percentage of the of the whoops the year that's past based on a start date and today's date. Bingo. So I don't know about you, but I've done built a lot of spreadsheets on the time and I end up sitting there going, how do I do this? And you work it out, it can do it in a fraction of the time. So if you're building sheets or even coding, you can test coding, code in there as well. Um, it can design macros and a whole bunch of stuff. What else? Can I, client scenarios? Uh, create a... Uh, financial planning client scenario. We can use for training based on a young, whoops, accumulator couple who are inheriting money. Bingo. So you can work on that 
with training or put it out there and a whole bunch of other stuff. Make sense? Uh, it also can do regulatory stuff, but yeah, that's probably, I mean, there's a whole bunch of other stuff, but if I just, if I look at sort of what you can use it for, I'll just run through it. And this is just so far copy editing, getting, crunching through research really, really quickly, uh, building some how-to guides, pulling out those informations. Don't, if you've got a step, that's all about how to do, you know, how to write, how to upload information into X plan. Why would you write it when you can tell it to do it? Summarizing meetings, cleaning up file notes cleaning up transcriptions. It can create emails for you, which you really know. SEO keyword optimization, taking something that's complex and simplifying, putting structure around it, coding, creating training scenarios. I even did, um, I did an email template in the last meeting and I said, give me uh, six, six client names. Make uh, two of them a couple. And it just generate, bang, in it goes. So it can crunch anything that you you think I shouldn't be doing this. This is just you know long. It's long winded work. I, I'm, I I really don't have the time to do it. Just jump in there. And again, you can use it directly. We're using Voila as an extension, and I believe if you wanted to grab it, I have nothing but um, praise for it. It's there's a lifetime deal on it. It's just an extension. Uh, I went and I, I liked it so much. I bought the $29 deal and I went, stuff it. I'm going to get the 119. It sits there and it's it's just, it brings it right into your face. But the other thing that um, it's also doing is, as I think Simon, you mentioned, it's 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 already integrated with, um, with Grammarly. So you can, if you're already using Grammarly, you can, you can jump in and do it. And we've actually already integrated it with Missive. So it has the ability to talk to, uh, our email inbox, and as a result, we can we can generate versions of an email straight within an inbox. And I believe they've got the same thing in Outlook. 